Alright guys, so welcome back. In the last video we went over the while loop in Rust. For those of you who haven't seen the video, click the um, card on the right hand side of this video or click the annotation um, in the middle of the screen. Uh, but for those of you who are here for the for loop tutorial in Rust, let's get straight into it. So for those of you who have done the C programming language or even just a little bit of it, you'll probably have covered the for loop in C. Now, you can see here in our uh, C-based for loop that we have the variable that stores our counter, we have the condition that will be checked every single time the loop is run, and we also have the afterthought, which uh, is basically what is run after all the statements inside this loop happen. Every single time uh, the iteration happens until this condition is met here. Rust takes a slightly different approach to for loops. Instead, for loops look something like this. So... In Rust, uh, a for loop looks something like this. Now, a for loop is broken up into three major components. We've got the for in, which is kind of the um, the syntax of a for loop. We've got the variable binding, so the variable in which we're going to be binding the current iteration to. We've got our range, which provides us an iterator. And then we've got the code, which we're actually going to be running every single time we go through an iteration. Now, to better understand the for loop, I actually want to show you the implementation uh, that's, that's behind the code. So what I'm going to do is this is the implementation that's in it. So we're going to go through this line by line. Uh, so let's go through that now. So we say let mute x equals to a range of 0 to 10. Uh, and then we say while well, let sum y equals x dot next. And then I just put some random code in here to kind of print out for some debugging reasons. But this is the most important part here. And this is what makes for loops in Rust so cool in a systems language. So we say while well, let sum, sorry, yeah, while we, while well, let sum y, and the sum is basically saying is we're declaring a special kind of variable here. So we're saying sum is basically, uh, there is, it's the opposite of none, right? So there's still a, um, a, another number in the series to iterate through. So while x dot next is still returning something, while it doesn't return none, uh, then we're going to go through our iteration. So that's essentially how, uh, I understand it's been implemented in the compiler. Now, if someone knows different, com uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how it was explained to me. Uh, so essentially what we're doing is we have a, we have a range which provides us an iterator, uh, and we call next to increase the uh, internal current place, which returns the um, which re which returns the next variable, which is then bound uh, to our variable y here. And when this when this returns none, uh, sorry, when this returns none, then we simply exit our uh, loop. Now, what I want to show you here is a slightly less contrived example. Uh, of the power of the iteration uh, capability of the for loop in Rust. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to make our own custom iteratable type in Rust. So we haven't actually gone over impl and structs and stuff yet, uh, but just bear with me that the syntax we, we go over in this video will be covered, but I just want to put a, I want to put forward the point of uh, why the C style loop has not been introduced into Rust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flush out some code and we're going to go through it line by line and uh, then you'll basically be able to see truly how powerful the for loop is in Rust. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I like bats, so I went for a bat theme. I don't know, I really couldn't think of anything else. But essentially, let's just quickly jump down to here, and then we'll see how we went ahead and implemented it. The implementation, I'm not so concerned about, uh, because that's for kind of a later, more advanced video, and we're definitely heading towards uh, that direction. Uh, but that's not exactly what this video is. This is still about the for loops. But let me go through this for loop code here, and then we'll go up to the implementation. So, as you can see here, we've got the iterator, and then we've got the uh, current uh, iterative uh, iterated item. Um, and I'll explain what that means in a second. Uh, and then we say in the collection, so uh, that's probably not a great name, but as you can see here, I've declared up there a collection, which is a type of bat collection. Um, so I've got a new collection up there, and that's our bad collection, and then we call into iterator, so we turn that into an iterator, and then we, finally, we get the enumerator on it, uh, so we get the iterator, and we get the enumerator, and then from that, then we can simply print out the current iteration, and we can get the bat's name, uh, and we could get the bat size as well if we wanted to. So essentially what we're doing here is we've got a custom collection type and uh, the add function here takes a type of bat, which is a struct. 
uh, which contains two fields, which is bat name and bat size. So essentially what we're doing here is we're able to implement our own iteratable types. Now, the reason that you might, you might think, well, in C, you can just simply say for I and you can just, you know, access it via the, um, via the custom accessor, sorry, by the accessor, uh, which would be like, for example, um, it would look something like this, like my underscore array, and then it would be like zero or I or whatever else. And you might think, well, that's great, but that's very, very prone to error, even from very experienced C programmers. So uh, Rust basically allows you to easily implement your own iteratable types. Now let's scroll up a bit here, and let's just quickly have a look at how I did this. So firstly, I define a custom struct, um, which is called bat. It has two fields. It has a bat name and the bat size, which is string and F32 or float32. Um, then we implement the struct for the actual collection. Uh, so that's pretty simple. Uh, it only has one single field, which is a vec, uh, which is a base type, and that is a it has a template type of bat, which is our remember our type up here. So we're taking a collection of these. Um, and we implement a, this is just kind of like a, a generic, uh, way of doing new in Rust. Everyone kind of understands it to be the way you would, uh, generally get new. Uh, it returns a new, uh, collection, which takes a, um, <clears throat> which returns a new vec of this type of that collection. Uh, and then we get fn add, which is our add function. And, uh, we'll get into this whole app, uh, um, ampersand mute self, but that's basically a reference to itself. Um, so this is only callable once you have a new type of collection, but that's not really part of this tutorial. Uh, and then we take finally the, uh, type of bat, which is our LM, and we push it into our collection, which is this vector up here. Uh, now this is the more important thing, uh, to do with loops in Rust. So essentially what we're doing here is, uh, into iterator is a, uh, a type that's provided to you by the standard template library in Rust. So we're implementing into uh, iterator for the type of uh, bat collection. So this is actually quite a nice syntax. I actually love the way that Rust does this. So it says you're implementing this specific thing uh, for this uh, struct here, which is the bat collection. Um, this is kind of some sort of more, even more complex stuff, but essentially uh, this is the type of the item that we're taking uh, for the iterator, which is type of bat. Uh, and the into iterator itself type, so it's the into iterator and it takes a template type of bat. And then finally, we define the iterator itself, um, since the uh, type exists in the uh, field of zero. If you remember the, um, the struct tutorial that I did, uh, sorry, the tuple tutorial I did where we could reference uh, things by dot zero, uh, it's just the first field, well structs can do the same sorts of things. Uh, if they're anonymously typed, so if you just have them in order, then they're going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, and we essentially return the into iterator, uh, sorry, the into iterator function. Um, and so that's, that, that makes our whole collection, uh, iteratable. So when we implement the into iterator, uh, type for back collection, that makes our collection iteratable. So then what we come down here is we get the iter and we get the, um, we get the iterator itself. So, um, what, what number are we up to in our collection? Uh, and then we get the current, uh, object in which we've got in, uh, our iteration. Uh, so just to show you how that works, let's go ahead and run the code here. So we'll say cargo run. And as you can see, I got a few warnings here about snake cases and stuff. Uh, but essentially you can see here we get number zero. The bat's name was fluffy, uh, number one, and the bat's name was fluffy. Uh, if I change that just to prove it, so we'll say the bat's name was proof. What a cool name, bat called Proof. Uh, but as you can see here, um, the bat's name was Proof. So that's literally um, all I've got for this tutorial for four loops. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be going over um, the ending iteration early in while loops again. Uh, and then finally, to finish off this loop series, we're going to be going over loop labels, which I personally haven't seen in any other languages. I'm sure they do exist, and someone will be like, oh, but it exists in this language, good sir. Uh, but I haven't seen it, but I think they're a really cool feature. So thanks for watching guys. And, um, I hope you enjoy this video. If you do drop a like and subscribe. And if you didn't leave a comment as to why you didn't like it and what I can do better. And I will see you guys in the next video. So cheers.